Okay, so Lagos has been ranked the fourth worst place to live in the whole wild world among 173 cities by the Economist Intelligence Unit. Now, the Economist Intelligence Unit um, is, is, is a division of the Economist Group with headquarters in London, UK. All right, it provides five year country economic forecasts, uh, country risks service reports, and industry reports. I have been joined by a travel and tourism entrepreneur, Sam Adeleke, to take a look at this rating. Hello, Sam. Hello, Maureen. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Glad to have you. So, is this an unfair assessment? or a wake-up call to Lagos and the Lagos State Government? Lagos is Nigeria's commercial nerve center. It's called the city of aquatic splendor, the center of excellence. It's a city that has given hope to many people and also welcome people from across the world who are looking for that hope of a better life. But to say that this assessment is not true is bearing our head in the sand like ostriches. Why? I have lived in Lagos for the past two decades plus. I have grown in Lagos, I've schooled in Lagos, and I currently work in Lagos. And I welcome tourists from across the world in Lagos. And the experience in Lagos is oh, so much to be desired, leaves so much to be desired. Why? The transportation system, the healthcare, circulation, the drainage systems, and even the quality of life. Can you imagine that in this report, and this is not business sensationalists or trying to be overtly alarmist, it's comparing us to Damascus in Syria mm -hmm. and also Tripoli in Libya. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, Ukraine, yes, Ukraine is, <laughs> that is currently a war-torn country, is steps above us. So this is a wake-up call to us that Lagos needs to do something significant, especially in the aspect of infrastructure. Now, I live on the island area and island axis of the city, and the construction has been going on around that area. The VGC, Lekki, Aja axis has been on for months, and residents are groaning under the pain of bad roads that contributes to low standard of living and even low quality of life. So these are elements that are in the control of the government. The truth is thousands flock into Lagos every day from across the country because they're trying to you know, express the Lagos dream. But the truth is this ranking is a reality. We've been ranked from 2017. As of 2019, we were the worst. We have been going up and down, you know, contesting mm -hmm. and dragging that spot to it, either Bangladesh, or, or Tripoli, or Damascus. These are countries in their streets. How can Lagos, and it's not a war-torn city, be competing with these countries? So this is a wake-up call to Lagos and to the government that something drastic needs to be done in terms of consistently attacking the problems as they come. So you don't defer solutions or defer um, problem solving to election season or to the period when you know that people will vote for you, but to be deliberate about intentionally filling potholes, intentionally building more healthcare facilities, intentionally educating your people. Because if you build so much without building the minds, uh, then you are just pouring water in the basket. So this, this, this ranking again is letting us know that we are not yet near that dream. That Lagos. In fact, we are not even to, 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 for us to be compared with any city in Africa, and we are supposed to be the fifth largest economy in Africa. So that means that places like Mogadishu, <laughs> places like um, uh, even even Uganda, Entebbe, and some of these, even South Sudan mm. and uh, Sudan at the moment, the capital of Sudan is what again, uh, Darfur. Yeah. So some of these places, okay, not, not that far, but some of these cities are even ahead of us. So it's important that the government sees this as an opportunity to come together and talk to the stakeholders that, guys, we need to do something drastic. So that is my take 
on this ranking. All right. Well, Lagos moved up a bit uh, from being the second yeah. worst in 2022 to being the fourth worst in 2023. And that's after, uh, according to that report, they saw improvement in education and health, but added that corruption is still a problem. Now, Lagos has been ranked above Algiers in Algeria, mm -hmm. uh, Tripoli, Libya, and Damascus, Syria. That's the, the work torn country, Syria. Lagos is, you know, uh, uh, the fourth after this. Now, the best, on the flip side, you have the best countries, the most livable countries. You have Austria, cities, I beg your pardon, Austria in ca the capital, uh, Austria's capital, Vienna, as the most livable city in the world, followed by Copenhagen, Calgary, Zurich, and Vancouver. Now, in 2018, when Lagos was ranked the third worst city to live in in the world, not this administration. Uh, the then Commissioner for Information and Strategy blamed the poor state of Lagos, the poor status on, of, on, on years of neglect and denial by the federal government. Is that still the challenge this time? Or is it, is it a case of corruption as stated by the EIU? That's a very lazy excuse by the state government blaming the federal government for its wounds. This happened during the Obasanjo years. The APC government have been in power since 2015, till date, and they have the apparatus of the legislature. So you cannot say the executive has good intentions and the legislature or the judiciary is ampering or stifling your capacity to grow this city. So corruption is a major issue. And corruption is not just an abstract phenomenon. It is people, it is humans that are corrupt. That is why everything starts and ends with leadership. It's important that this government sees another opportunity with this new election season to right the wrongs and to invest much in the capital, human capital development of our city. We saw how um, the government weaponized the tool of ethnic and, tri and, and tribal diversity to rile people up, people up against each other. And right now we are doing so much more of demolition than building. So don't just build infrastructures, build people up as well. It's important that we also note that this moving up the ranks in 2022 to 2023 is because of the elections. Even just a few months ago, no, not a few months, about a few weeks ago before this inauguration, we saw that the state government also had to get some loans, some bond to in invest in education. And some have debated that, oh, that was used for something else. We'll go into that. But the point is, we should not use election season as an opportunity for growth only. Growth should be an all-time thing. It should be a sustained effort. Many people have contested that Lagos has a master plan, has a growth plan for decades, for 10 years, 15 years. But, guys, we know how this money is being spent. At some point, the Lagos Speaker, Lagos the speaker, was, uh, speaker of the House was telling us that Minolowo, that, you, that in, in other words, that means money is meant to be spent. As a point when it was being um, investigated by the EFCC for mal, what's the word now? For misusing funds of the state. You know, misappropriation. On, misappropriation. Misappropriation, thank you. For, for trips and all of that. So when we look at the way the money of Lagos is being spent and the way we generate money and the number of people that are living in this city, we can compare it to the growth to the rate of growth in this city. Now, having said that, it's important that we also balance the narrative because in my sector, I welcome international tourists into Lagos especially to tour the city, to explore the city. So we have some iconic landmarks, some iconic destinations in the city that still fascinate people. Despite the chaos in the city, a lot of tourists still want to experience what it feels like to visit the Venice of Africa. That's Makoko so to speak. Also the Badagri Slave Town, also the Nikkei Art Galleries, also the resorts in Lagos. Lagos is beautiful, right? We are, we are, we are a coastal city. 70% of the state is actually water. Mm -hmm. uh, however, we must not deny the fact that only a few people even have access or the capacity to visit the beaches in this city. Mm -hmm. So imagine you live in a coastal city and you have to pay to visit your beaches. Nowhere else, it's not anywhere else in Africa. So it's important that we also understand that even if our growth level is slow, we must also ensure that our, city, our citizens also enjoy the beauty of our city. Lagos is growing, to be honest. 
people are pumping money, people are investing, and so many things are going on a daily basis, but we must let the government know that you cannot tell us to stop being objective with the quality of life in our city. Sam, so corruption gonna, is major. Sam, I'm going to come back to you on this because you being in the tourism sector, mm. you're going to have to tell us what this government can do to make Lagos more livable because that is right. your sector. But let's go to the opinion of some Lagosians who, and, and some town planners who believe that this report and all the other reports that ranked Lagos second world uh, city, a worst city to live in, third worst city, and now the fourth, that they, they believe that this is just an, another attempt by a foreign media to ridicule Africa. How do you respond to that? <laughs> I compare this to the statement that the politicians threw to us during the election season when they tell us, Charlie, in the Southwest here, that you know, Rubaru, when we're trying to compare the impact of we electing somebody who supposedly does not have um, a full Yoruba heritage contesting for the governorship of the state. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't even need the economists of London to tell me that I live in a very, 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 very dangerous city. There are times that even I, when driving in this city, I have to watch my back during the day. We hear consistent reports of of, of burglary, of, of rape, of destruction of lives and property, of, of things happening in this city. So I don't even need to have this report as justification. But for crying out loud, we also see that there are other African cities who are of the ladder. So why Lagos? It's important that we do not dismiss international effort, the international community's effort to make us look objectively at ourselves. But when the IMF when the global, um, the, 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 the World Bank gives us money and recommend money for us, we don't deny that. We, we don't say, oh, we don't want. It's only when you are being told the truth about yourself. That is when you, you now tell us that, oh, um, you guys are just bluffing. You are only trying to call, uh, bring, call, call our attention, look for attention so that we can ask you for what to do. No, we are not. Lagos and its people should not tackle the international community saying that, oh, we are probably, uh, that we need their consulting or we need their solution. Mm -mm. We know what to do. We live here. We will try here. And we are not going anywhere for those of us who are not Japan or living in the country. So it's important that we do not dismiss that, but use it as some form of introspection. If you deny this, or you, this report, or you feel that these rankings are not justifiable, then bring out facts and figures. Then be also objective. So don't counter data with innuendo. Don't counter facts with just sensationalism or trying to rip up sentiments. But be able to let let the people know that the people that bring these rankings are saying you are mistaken. Mm. I would like to invite you to a summit. Let's have an intellectual discourse where you can let us know the facts behind your figures, and they will also bring us to you. So in an intellectual community, in, in a very educated southwest state like Nigeria or like Lagos, we should be so much open to engaging these international bodies who are taking time to rank the cities in the world. It also shows that we are not just knee-jerk reactionaries or, 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 or reactionists, but we are also proactive about giving the same level of detail to ranking other cities ourselves. So don't just say, don't rank me. You also, Lagos, rank yourself, they rank others as well. Then we cannot have that kind of summit, that intellectual exchange to really prove or disprove those kind of assertions from the international community. That's my take on this. Oh, well, that, that report survey of 173 countries used 30 qualitative and quantitative factors across five broad categories, stability, healthcare, culture and environment, education and infrastructure. Now, Lagos, by virtue of past, you know, of, of its virtue, the status of past capital and commercial status would definitely continue to attract people into the state. I mean, anyone who, uh, who shies away from that is not being true and honest to himself. And so that means that anyone who um, lobbies or vies to become a governor of Lagos State must know what he is getting into. 
And so shouldn't give us excuses of, oh, Lagos receives so many people every day and all of that. Of course, we do understand the fact that it is unfortunate that other states across the country are not, the governors there are not living up to expectation. They are not making their states viable and livable, which is why a lot of their people migrate from there to Lagos State, which used to be the commercial uh, city of this country, uh, the, 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 the city of this, the commercial center of this country and uh, the capital of the country. And I'm trying, to, I'm almost biting my tongue. It used to be the capital of the country and the commercial uh, nerve center of, of the country as well. However, what should this government and any other person who is going to vibe? Because after four years, Governor Samuel is going to leave. What should they be doing, especially someone in your sector? What should they be doing to make Lagos livable with all the challenges that Lagos is expected to have? on a daily basis? What should they be doing? First, the experience that visitors have when they come in through the airport. Flying in and out of Nigeria right now, especially through international airports, is so stressful, it's so tedious, it's so nerve-wracking, and it could give you accelerated palpitation because of the way the personnel around the airports, both official and non-official, being backed by the state, the way they harass people that are leaving and coming to the country. Fine, granted, we have a new terminal. Granted, the Osho, the Lagos Osho, the Express has just been built. But I, I still flew in from, the, from, from my international trip just a few weeks ago, and I still get people who fly, we still have customers and clients who travel in and out. The experience is still terrible. I think the government, the APC government of the center and also the region, Lagos, must do something drastic about making our airports sane, mm -hmm. making it calm, making it welcoming, mm -hmm. making it a place that is less of harassment. Mm -hmm. That will help visitors have a new perspective, an improved orientation and also give them that kind of comfort that, yes, I'm coming to a city that respects me, that honors me, and that will not squeeze money out of me even at the entry. That's one. The second is, it's important that we improve the circulation of the city. Interestingly, I studied urban and regional planning, so I understand city planning, and I also served during my school by IT at Lagos State Fiscal, the Ministry of Fiscal Planning and Urban Development. And I know the work that is being done going around the city ensuring that um, things are being done properly, building permits, a right of way, things are done. But the, the, the experience I had at that time, and still has not changed because I still have interactions with the ministry, is that there is still so, almost, so much of rent seeking, so, so much of, of corruption ridden by people who have the money to buy their way into getting things done at the detriment of the city. So we need to no spot. plan this city intentionally and be deliberate about the de demolition and rebuilding spots that are detrimental to the well-being of, the, of, the, of this city. We are a lot in this city, but only a few are enjoying the benefit of the city. That's, that's true. The third is educate your people. Oh my goodness. The number, the sheer number of thoughts that have not been empowered by the state on the major roads that stop public buses and even harass private ones on the bridges, these people can be put to use if they're educated and given the right skills and tools to compete globally and also able to welcome tourists and to play in this sector. So education is very key. We, we need our people to be educated. That is the The first is don't overtax your people. There's so much multiple taxation going on in Lagos right now. Some of us work, work with these destinations, the, the hotels, the bars, the, the sites where people enjoy. We are paying a lot, man. We are even paying so much even to get our tourists to enjoy the city just because, of course, people have to remit to the government. So these are key areas and the, the, the elephants in the room, electricity. Mm -hmm. Now that we have a government that is willing to divest power 
and to democratize the capacity of states to generate and circulate and transmit, rather, it's important that Lagos take the forefront. The president is a former governor of this city, and the potentials are there. So it's important that we keep driving this on that guys make power cheap so that people can also have enough money to expand their capacity and employ more people. Because as a business person, we're trying to keep costs low and optimize profits. So if the cost of generating power is reduced to the best minimum and also tax incentivized by the states, this will really help us to welcome more people, to hire more people, and to ensure that our city blows up. Because guess what? Every time we welcome tourists to this city, you know, there's a difference between living here as a tourist and living as, as a resident, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone enjoys Lagos. So I want to stay the more. I want to, because they're enjoying the best parts of the city. So it's important that we are intentional about challenging the government and encouraging them and holding them accountable in this, you know, important sectors yes, in the Lagos um, city. Time, time will not allow us. This is a very interesting conversation. I wish we could continue. We may have to repeat this <laughs> interview so that we can talk more about tourism in the, in the, in the, in the city. Uh, Sam Adeleke, travel and tourism entrepreneur, has been my guest. Thank you so much, Sam. Thank you for having me. You're still watching The Breakfast. We'll be back with sports. Stay with us.